Hello everyone, it's Menenberg, and it is now about three months until the AP history exams. Now, as you may have heard, there's been some updates and some changes to the online format. We're not gonna get into those right now. You can watch Heimler's video on it. He covers it pretty well. For now, I wanna talk to you about figuring out what you're doing wrong on the multiple choice. So I have a lot of students like this, and maybe you're like this as well, and you've taken a bunch of unit exams by now, and you study, and you do the notes, and you practice, and all these things, and you're still getting kind of bad unit scores on the multiple choice, and it's getting frustrating at this point. You're starting to wonder, okay, what am I doing wrong? How can I do better on the actual AP exam? Okay, so this is this video is going to address some of those things and hopefully at the end you'll have at least a few ideas about what you might try to do better. Okay, these aren't magic bullets, by the way. These are just things you should think through as it pertains to your multiple choice skills on an AP history exam. So sadly, one of the things that we have to teach you how to do is how to test well. We are taking a very rigorous, challenging exam that is designed to encompass an entire year's worth of history content, or rather 800 years worth of history content. And you're supposed to demonstrate your knowledge, your skills, your mastery of all that content in a little over three hours. Reasonable, not so much, but with that level of intensity, that level of stress, oftentimes we as human beings struggle to put down on paper or on the computer, whatever the test format is, how much we actually know. So again, what we're trying to do here is master ourselves in that test taking environment. And to that end, I need a drink of the coffee and then I'm gonna show you a document we've created over the years that will hopefully help you diagnose what you're doing wrong or what you might need to improve on. That's the key here. What do we need to fix in order to get better? You see, so many times I have students who tell me I've done the reading. Look at all the notes I took. I studied for this many hours and yet here's my result. Okay, so the answer is not to go and study more. The answer is not to go and reread the textbook or add six more pages of notes to your notes. It is just not it. It's how do I address what is actually happening in that test environment? So I'm going to share a document on the screen here and hopefully this might create a, a few ideas for you. Again, this is not totally exhaustive, but it's something. So let's start with the first one and, and mind you on question eight of your exam, you might have multiple things going on that's tripping you up. So the first uh, category I have there is insufficient information. So this can range anything from I didn't have the information, I studied but I couldn't remember it. Uh, you know, I knew the main ideas of imperialism in Africa, but I didn't know any of the actual details or who was in, in, in play there. I knew the information, but I just I couldn't figure out that this was the information that I needed for that question. Um, maybe I studied the wrong stuff or I didn't read the text thoroughly, whether it's the stimulus or perhaps the textbook before you studied for the test. OK, uh, the next category is test anxiety. OK, so this is a huge one that there's really not a lot of ways to uh, address except for practicing that test environment. And so I, you know, I was so tired, I couldn't, so I was up all night studying, so I couldn't concentrate. I panicked or doubted myself. Uh, I had a major mental block and I couldn't move on from question 10 and just spent too much time there. Test wisdom, here's a category that is, is very, very common as well. I didn't make the best choice. You know, I narrowed it down to two and I simply picked the wrong one. That happens. Uh, I didn't notice limiting words like in the wording of the question I, I i read it so quickly i didn't see that it said accept this or all but or the most directly related to all these different phrases um being confused by the intent of the question is a huge one that happens a lot understanding that prompt is often the case why our students get tripped up so again it's not so much that you don't know the stuff it's that 
the wording of the question or the framing of the stimulus just it messes with your mind and you can't demonstrate it. Um, here's one that is, is going to happen. I carelessly marked the wrong choice. I knew it was D, but my mind on question number 17 went to choice B, like when I bubbled it in or whatever. Test skills, poor use of time. This is arguably one of the most common things I see at this stage in the year in February. Uh, 55 minutes, 55 multiple choice questions. Most students are taking about twice that amount of time right now, and you got to speed it up. So practicing that is key. I changed the correct answer to a wrong answer. That self-doubt creeps in, and that goes with the test anxiety as well. And I think a lot of students struggle with that because they are so worried about every single question that they don't trust their own instincts and their own abilities. You have the abilities, people. You're really, really smart. You just got to trust that a little bit more or flag the question and maybe if you have time and if you're allowed to go back and take another look. Uh, this is a, a, such a frustrating one I see sometimes. People skip a question. They're on question number you know, 22 and they can't figure it out so they move on and like oh I'll come back and they just forget to come back. Every question on the multiple choice section must be answered. Even if you run out of time in the last 10 minutes, you have like 20 questions left, you go through and bubble every last one of them because you're going to get some right just by guessing. So skipping a question is the very last thing you ought to be doing. Again, the idea in this document, by the way, if you want a copy of this document, just email me. I think my email is on my main YouTube page or you have me as a student, you know my email. Uh, I'll get it to you. But the idea is that you're looking for patterns. You're looking for trends. You're trying to identify, here's what I as an individual student am doing in that test environment that is keeping me from demonstrating how smart I actually am when it comes to history or US, world, Euro, whatever the content is. I'm getting tripped up in that environment. And by identifying those things, and there's probably multiple ones of those that is at play for you, but by identifying them, you're going to be able to practice and work on those areas rather than simply opening that textbook and you know reading it three more times or writing a bunch more notes or studying for four more hours and staying up all night before the next unit exam. These types of working harder tactics, they don't generally work. It's all about working smarter. Working smarter in this case is going to require that you know, acknowledge, and remedy what those issues are for you personally. This list, again, is not meant to be exhaustive, but it's meant to get you an idea of what you might be during, doing during a, a multiple choice portion of an AP history exam. A couple other thoughts that might be tripping you up, and you can identify these uh, when using that, that, that chart there, is maybe you missed all of the questions related to one stimulus. So you didn't understand, there's a fundamental misunderstanding of that stimulus. Go back and figure out what you missed. Maybe you, you can't handle maps or maybe you just don't know enough or haven't studied enough about China. OK, those types of trends have to be called out by you and you got to do some reflection to get that information out. Otherwise, you're going to just go to default, which means study more, write more notes, reread the textbook, and you're just going to spin your wheels and keep getting the same result. You don't need to do that. You're better, you're smarter, and you've worked too hard to sell yourself short in this case. All right, people, that's it for now. We're going to have more AP skills coming up in other videos. I'm going to touch on understanding prompts for SAQs coming up soon. But until then, remember, life is about choices. We'll see you next time.